But I would say, look, if you look in the Bible, look at how many characters fell so many times that God showed his favor to him. I look at King David, how many times King David fell, but David, God still showed David favor. And even look at the parable of the prodigal of the son. When the prodigal of the son left Christ, and then he came back, him coming back doesn't take away that he ran away. Right? But yet, the father still accepted him. So remember, don't focus on your past sins that even though you seem like they, have, they can't be undone, in eternity they will be. There's, uh, making us believe our sufferings must be punishment from God. Right? If I didn't get the right grade, or if I didn't pass this right test, this must be punishment from God. If I'm having family issues, if I'm having people issues, this must be punishment from God. When that happens, you sink deeper and deeper into sin. Right, four, making Christians think that they struggle on in thoughts, then that means I'm not Christian at all. And I, I go through this a lot too, saying, man, if I was really Christian, why am I having these struggles of loving God? If I'm really Christian, why do I struggle to not sin and just sin more and more and more? Right? And this is something that I think as Asians, as we change the American people as well. Fifth, reminding us of regular sins. Meaning that, man, there's these sins that I've repented and prayed for, yet I keep doing it over and over and over and over again. I keep falling into lust, I keep falling into pride, I keep falling into gossip, into slander, into lying, into hate, into laziness, into apathy. And I try so hard, yet, yet I can't get through it. And this must be the end. This must be the end. When I say to him, I say that to you. Remind you of regular sins. But look, one thing I want to say about this is repentance. Look, repentance is not the stopping of your behavior, but it's the changing of your heart. And sometimes, even when your heart is in the right place, as a sinner, as human nature, you just continue to sin. That's something you can't fix. And Satan's trying to use that against you. Lastly, six. I'm making Christians think, man, if I have no joy in God, then God has left me. And God has left me. Um, this kind of related to, I think, uh, the point before, but with this one, it's like, oh man, I, I just don't have joy in reading the Bible. I don't want to pray. I don't want to talk about God. I don't want to go to church. That means God has left me. But I would say, look, there's so many times in the Bible where it seems like God has left his people, Israel, even Christ. But in the end, he always comes back to redeem them. So don't fall into that. All right, so with all this, what I'm trying to say is, look, he attacks you in two very specific ways. Temptation and accusation. Now with that, you might say, where can we go from here? But what I want to focus on is how do we fight back against these things? All right, how can we stop Satan from tempting and accusing us of these things, leading us to more sin? I'll say this. Um, one, you have to be self-aware of what lies that you usually succumb to. And this could be messy. This could be troubling. This could be hard. It could be something you don't want to do because this is really looking at your own life and saying, man, where do I, be, where do I find that I struggle or fall the most? Where is it? And now all those lies, right, that, that, that you presented, which ones hit you the hardest? Right, usually I find that guys fall more into temptation and girls usually fall more into accusation, but thinking deeper, like how does Satan really affect my life? How does he tempt me and or how does he accuse me? If you don't realize these things and you're not being able to start fighting them in the first, because once you realize these things from the offset, they're so much easier to fight rather than just fighting in the darkness. So really think, man, how is Satan attacking my own personal life? How is he tempting me? How is he accusing me? And look, Satan's a smart dude. He's a really smart dude. He's smarter than all of us. He knows more Bible than you. He knows more about the gospel than you. He knows more about God than you. Meaning this. He'll always change the tack once you get it down. Meaning, look, your whole life, you're always going to be tempted and accused. Even when you realize it, you might fix one part, but boom. You realize it. Satan's so going to attack me in this whole different way. And when I looked at these lies and these temptations and accusations, I realized, even in my own life, there's times when I realize, well, yeah, Satan's attacking me, maybe, let's say, I've seen it where he's making me see sin as virtue. 
And I realized that and I said, yeah, you know what, I'm just self-justifying myself, so I'm going to stop that, I'm going to fix it. But then I realized a year later when I'm looking back at my life, and then I'm worrying, about, and then Satan's accusing me. And I find myself more depressed than before me. Look, Satan's always going to attack you. Always. That's just a part of life. Right, don't let your guard down on these schemes. Because they're always going to be happening to you. Satan's constantly tempting you or accusing you. Even right now, as you're sitting down here in this seat, whether you're Christian or not, he's doing his best to tempt you or accuse you of something. Always, constantly. And secondly, understand Satan's? Look, he's using what's already inside of you. You provide Satan with the ammunition. You're providing Satan with the weapons and how he attacks you. Try to live in what he can use. Meaning, look, he plays on your own sins. It's not like he's coming in with a sword and swinging everywhere. No. He's playing with what's already inside of you. Meaning, if you control what's inside of you, in essence, you control how much Satan attacks you. This is what Ephesians says. Um, this is Paul speaking. Um, Be angry and do not sin. No, that's, that's wrong. But anyways, second part. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Meaning this. Paul not saying every time before you go to sleep, you, you try and flush everything out. What he's saying is, the more you let things sit in your heart, the bigger of a weapon that Satan can grab and attack you. The more you fall into pride, the more you fall into hate, the more you fall into whatever it may be, lust, gossip, slander, the more Satan's going to have a harder and harder grip on you because he's using what's already inside of you. So one, look, be self-aware of what you're attacking me with. And two, realize if he's using what's inside of me, and I can control this inside of me and bounce that out. And this is a quote again from the screw tape letters. This is what C.S. Lewis says. It is funny how mortals, mortals always think, always picture us as putting things into their minds. In reality, our best work is done by keeping things out. And this is the demon talking to another demon. What does this mean? It means we think that a lot of times the demons are attacking us with, with false information with lies, maybe even with possession. But the key attack that Satan does is he does all this so he can block you away from God. Their attack is cutting you off from God. So what is the final and ultimate thing that we must do to attack back, to fight back? The ultimate defense is the gospel. The gospel abolishes both lies. Because, let's go back, temptation, what is temptation? Too high of a view of yourself. Saying, oh, Satan's saying, look at how good you are. Just do this sin. Accusation. Oh, you suck so much. Why are you even trying? Just go ahead and live your life. But what does the gospel do? What does the gospel tell us? One, that we are sinners. And it attacks, saying, look, you are a lowly human being. Because if not, then why did Christ come down to die for you? If you were so good, if you were so holy, if you were so righteous, if you were so bigger of yourself than you are, then why did God himself come down to sacrifice his life for you? You are a sinner to the gospel. Yet, what does the gospel always say? But with Christ's death, you have been poured on with great love. Love of God that was sacrificed by himself. And that's true. That means nothing can take away the righteousness that Christ has given you. It gives you a perfect balance. Right? We are sinners under a holy God temptation. Um, we are loving, we are loved to the point of God sacrificing his own son. Accusation. If we realize the gospel in its full entirety, it's able to attack both these points and fight back against the devil. So do that, right? Do your best to always realize, man, if Satan's attacking me, once I realize how he's attacking me, then I gotta understand the gospel even deeper so that I can attack both these lies equally. Right? Because you'll always go through both. Always. Guy, girl, college student, not college student, you'll always go through both temptation and accusation in your life. Yeah, what are you gonna do about it? What are you gonna do about it? Uh, were there any questions on what I talked about at all? About lies?
Yes. In Ephesians 4.26, the verse said, be angry and not sin, and he said that was wrong. Yeah, I think I misquoted that, but let me check. If I did misquote it, it's probably, or if it's right, it's out of context in a sense. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each of one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members, we are members of one of another. Be angry and do not sin, do not the sun go down on your anger. Give no opportunity to the devil. I think what Paul's trying to say is be angry towards the devil in a sense. If that makes sense. Are there any other questions about anything? Going once. Going. Yes, Captain. Uh, how do you draw the line? Um, the funny thing is, I think Satan uses you to talk to yourself. So I would always say, if you're ever finding yourself depressed, um, or being too prideful, in a sense, I think somewhere in it, Satan's behind it somehow. Maybe not directly, maybe not fully, but any sense that you're talking to yourself in a non-biblical or godly way, in a sense, it's from Satan. So I don't know from there. Cool, any other questions? Once, going twice. Cool, let me just pray and then we'll close for today. Uh, dear Lord, we thank you for just today. Thank you for another day that we can come. Just gather and have fellowship with among believers and worship you and have fellowship within the word and fellow believers. And Lord, we ask that uh, today and from now moving on, that when we go about our lives and we struggle, and we sin, that Lord, we realize, man, there's an enemy out there that's out to get us. Now we are aware that Satan and, and Satan, the devil, the demons, they're always constantly trying to attack us with lies, with temptation, with accusation. Um, but Lord, allow us to really be able to understand what's going on and how we're being attacked. And fight back with one being self-aware and also just with your glorious gospel. By understanding that, Lord, as we were sinners, destined to die and go to hell. You came down to earth as God and man and sacrificed your own life so that we could be forever redeemed and nothing can take that away. So allow us to use that truth to fight the devil today, tomorrow, and for the rest of eternity. So we thank you. Be with us for the rest of the 90s. My prayer. Amen.